Hi, 12s, it's Mr. Lim here again, and this is the video on secondary structures of proteins. The third video is about proteins. Okay, so, did you like the ending of that last video? Totally not a mistake. All right. So, secondary structures. Once amino acids are all joined together via ribosomes in a long chain, various parts of a cell uh, take on the role of folding the protein into the right shape. All right, so once the folding process leads to a creation of two types of uh, secondary structures, so part of that folding leads to these two things, Okay, alpha helices and beta pleated sheets. Okay, so these secondary structures are characterized by the fact that they are held together by hydrogen bonding between peptide links um, within the same protein. Okay, so it's hydrogen bonding between peptide links within the same protein. These three things are kind of important when you're defining secondary structures because hydrogen bonding can be between a whole bunch of stuff and you wanted to say it's between the peptide structures or the amide structures um, for you to get the mark. Okay, so if you think, if you remember what a peptide structure is, here's a, a peptide structure. Okay, here's that peptide link. Okay, so what happens is that this H here, this H here, can form a hydrogen bond with maybe the next uh, amide structure. Okay, so, and that amide structure might be on one long chain over here, and that might that amide structure might be on one long chain of there, right? But as long as this is part of the same protein, they're all linked together, then it's going to be called a secondary structure. Okay, so it's between the peptide links of the same protein. Okay, um, so the hydrogen and the nitrogen uh, bonds in the lone pair, oh, oh that's not so sweet. it's alpha helices. So I don't know why that turned up right. Okay, so the spring-like structure which forms when hydrogen bonding occurs between every fourth peptide link in a pro portion of protein. Okay, so the hydrogen on the nitrogen, uh, hydrogen bonds to the lone pair of electrons on the carbonyl group uh, of another peptide link four amino acids down. Okay, so what does that mean? Here's your long line of amino acids. Let's just imagine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay. So those carbonyl groups, which are these, link with the hydrogen from the nitrogen there, right? But four down. So the nitrogen and hydrogen are number two. We'll hydrogen bond with the carbonyl group of number six, which might, which that nitrogen here might, whoops, that's not the right way it goes. Uh, where is that nitrogen here? Might bond to, if that one's the number seven one, eh, it's supposed to be green. That number seven one can go to the number 11 one, okay? And that one there. Okay, so the idea is that those hydrogen bonds uh, occur every four amino acids or so, all right? And what that does is that um, it creates a spiral structure, okay? So a spiral structure like a spring, okay? Which is held together by all of these hydrogen bonds up and down the, that spring, okay? Hydrogen bonds up and down that spring, okay? Because if you think about it, when you have a spring, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm not drawing this very well because it's supposed to be only every four, but you get the idea, okay? Yeah, actually, I've done, not drawn it too bad. Two to six, they form a hydrogen bond there, okay? So, um, that's how that um, hydrogen bonding uh, forms between the amide groups or the peptide groups of amino acids four uh, down the primary structure, okay? And these uh, create rigid columns, which you know, hold stuff together. Uh, effectively, it's like a little pillar there that, you know, if you need it there, then it's there. All right. Um, and then I just drew a diagram of alpha helix there, but you get the idea. So, okay, so this is a spring-like structure, okay? And then the hydrogen bonds go from one part of the string, the spring to another part, okay? And usually four apart. So that part there will go to that part there, okay? Maybe that part there and that part there. And it's really important to remember it's between the peptide links. Okay. Um, 
Beta pleated sheets, a sheet uh, like structure which occurs when hydrogen bonding occurs between peptide links in a portion of a protein. Okay, a line of amino acids goes back and forth, and all along the line of peptide bonds, hydrogen bonds, bonds form with parallel lines of the peptide bonds. Okay, what the hell does that mean? Okay, so this is your amino acid going back and forth, back and forth in a kind of flattish sheet. Okay, so what happens is then the amino, the peptide bond, oh, what? Yeah, what did my finger? Okay, here we go. The peptide bond here and the peptide bond there can form an um, hydrogen bond there. Okay, that peptide bond there, that peptide bond there, that peptide bond there, that peptide bond there. Okay. They'll all form hydrogen bonds holding this sheet together. Okay. Holding that sheet together. Okay. And so if you think about it, this is no longer going to be like every fourth carbon or every fourth amino acid because you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, so one might bond with fourteen, four with twelve, and six with ten. Right, so they're not every four, it's just going to be however long these um, uh, beta sheets are, or at least however long they are this way, however long they are that way, then that will determine kind of how they're going to bond to each other. Okay, so but they go back and forth along the line of peptide bonds, hydrogen form, bonds form with the, the parallel lines of the peptide bonds. Okay, so the parallel lines are these parallel lines. Okay, so... They commonly run anti parallel to each other like a concertina shape. Okay, so that means that they go yeah, like that. Okay, and this create a wavy pleated sheet. So what that does that mean? Imagine a sheet of paper, and then you fold it, 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 fold it like that. Okay, and so it's like a pleated sheet. Um, yeah, that's what pleats mean. Okay, um, then beta pleated sheets can hold. Uh, long lines of amino acids together for a certain shape to form. Sometimes beta sheets can then roll into a cylinder. So imagine a sheet of paper. Okay. And then you can roll it into a cylinder. Ooh. Mr. Lim can draw cylinders. That totally looks like a cylinder. Mr. Lim, you suck at drawing cylinders. Okay. All right. You can roll it to form a cylinder. And that's what a sheet can do. It can turn into a circle or it can just stay there as a flat surface uh, when you need a flat surface. All right. Um... And then those, uh, you know, that was supposed to be a beta sheet. So there you go. There's the beta sheet. And remember, it is between the peptide links within, um, within the protein, within the same protein, and then the hydrogen bonds between the carbonyl group of one and the uh, amine group of another. Okay. Carbonyl group of one to an amine group of another. Okay, and that's uh, the secondary structures of alpha helices and beta pleated sheets. Do not forget the word pleated, okay, because if you just say beta sheets, it's wrong. All right, that's it.